recording this to let you all know that I got a decent microphone. And that means that I will be doing commentary, tutorials and all that stuff with a proper sound recording. Now all I need is a good camera, but those are kind of expensive. First tutorial I'm going to do uh, involves very basic, how do I turn my black and white outlines into very clean uh, digital images, get it printed properly and, and crispy and nicely. And there's two different ways to do it. So I drew Perry the Platypus here uh, two different ways. We're both going to color them. I drew Perry with black and white ink. Just black and white, no grays, nothing. I purposely made a few mistakes so I could show everyone how you can also edit this type of outline very easily in Photoshop. And I've got a different version which is Perry the Platypus uh, drawn with just pencil. I still kept it rich in contrast uh, because that just makes it a lot easier to color. Okay, so uh, I scanned them all in. Two individual images. I'm gonna clean them up using a regular brush. Always make sure that you don't have spots and smudges. Okay, that looks unrealistic. So I'm changing the brush to something that adds up which um, looks a bit more like the lines that I drew it with. Like that. That looks good. That way you can still kind of edit certain things without it looking too digitally altered. And then I'm choosing the black and I'm drawing over it with the same brush I used to erase it with. There. I'm going to copy this file here. Poof. Turn them into two individual files. Now we're going to do this one first. This is not clear black. It's grays and dark colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the bitmap. It asks you some things. Keep the DPI the same. This looks bad. Make sure that when you go to bitmap that you change it to 50% threshold. This way it just filters it properly. Using a pencil and a pencil eraser, I can properly clean and kind of redraw the things that look bad. There, I cleaned everything up. Looks all nice and crisp. I'm gonna set it to grayscale. Then we're gonna set it to RGB. There's also CMYK, which I'm going to talk about now. CMYK stands for Cyan. Cyan. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to. CM magenta. Y is yellow. And K stands for black. Don't know why it's a K, but I'm going to show you the difference between these two profiles. The internet has more colors than uh, a printer has with ink. So when you convert from RP, uh, RGB to CMYK, you get that. So try, if you want to make something that's, uh, that's for printing, make sure not to make the colors too bright. I do suggest working in CMYK because then you just cannot screw up but you can make very bright colors in CMYK just uh, well yeah so we're gonna start coloring selecting it with the magic tool and then first fill up the gaps where you think that when using a paint bucket the color is gonna go through so you fill that up first and then paint bucket some yellow and I realized that the color is not right so I'm turning it more blue like the original Perry there I see some more white spots checking to see if the colors are right and then I'm gonna start shading I'm not gonna go into detail with this because how to shade is a very very large subject and I will be discussing that some other time. Just um, 
keep in mind where is the light source where do you want the area to be lighten up and if the light is hitting this one part where is it going to be shaded it's a kind of a I'm using the control U window to change the saturation and contrast a bit I always like to add a bit of white there especially when I'm doing cartoony characters they are um, makes them look a bit more like plastic <laughs> I guess Done. I'm gonna do the tail, add some white to the beak and stuff. Doing the eyes, a bit of blue, gives it a more, uh, makes it more glossy. There, there's some spots that I missed. You wanna check that because if you, you know, see that stuff on paper, it's too late some more junk there. I'm setting my brush to darken now that way when I choose the color to fill it with I can just go over the black outline without it messing it up. It only picks up the colors that are uh, lighter than the color I'm using. It's very handy if you want to correct things. Now I'm coloring the outlines. I already did them. I missed, I stopped recording for a second. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to do it. You just select the outline basically because there, it's pure black, so it's uh, no hassle. And you just uh, color it with your pencil, and you can add some color and dodge. You can add some um, burn, make it darker or lighter, add some gradients, whichever you like. You can even use. Um, any of the natural brushes or use no outline at all give it the same color as the uh, color you used on the inside remove the background if you like and then we're gonna make it a transparent picture set it to PNG uh, PNG is more advanced than a GIF because PNG uses uh, actual transparent pixels and when you use a GIF you have to assign what uh, background you want it to use, for example, black or white. If you're making images for your website and you use GIF, you have to adjust all the GIF images to suit the background of your website. When you use PNG, you don't have to. It, uh, it's just transparent. Yay! So now we're going to the other drawing. I started coloring with a second layer set to multiply, like that. And that way, when I'm brushing, the blood, the outlines are just um, popping through, which is very ideal when you have very sketchy lines like that. I use a natural brush. I can use uh, the eraser as well to make it white. That filled it up. I'm gonna add a bit of texture there by brushing over it with a just a tad darker. Hypercam doesn't properly record it that well because I'm, I'm recording in limited colors But you get the idea you can also just use real textures, but I like it this way because it gives more It has gives you more control add in some white Again, I decided that the light source is aiming towards the back its back La la la. Okay. Smooth it out. Add some dark. I just, uh, this kind of stuff comes very natural, so I'm doing everything in one layer. You can use more layers if you like. You can also, um, because I'm working in one layer, I only set one layer in multiply. If you want to use more layers, it's best to use the outline layer on the top set that to multiply and then all the color layers under it I've done it the exact opposite <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm using the eraser right now set to the same brush as the brush I'm using to color with it gives a bit of a more popping white 
thingy. Blah, blah. So, clean it out. Ta -da. Adding more blue there. I guess I'm fading out the light. Lighter parts. Making it a bit more smooth. Then I'm getting, oh, getting playful there. Adding some green. You can do whatever. It goes, it comes naturally with that look. Going more of a more traditional look, so you can just kind of add some yellows and some greens. It doesn't have to be exactly like the original character. Very pastel, light, yellowish, brownish for the beak. Don't want it to pop out too much in comparison to the to the skin. For the tail, I decided to make the lines lighter instead of darker, which makes them pop out a bit more, but not in a in an aggressive or dark way. Adding some shading, smoothing it out. I'm just improvising. <laughs> I just realized this looks a lot like something you could put on a uh, birth certificate or a baby card. Smoothing out the background. Using Control U, kind of looking at. Looks a bit weird with this camera because it's recording in very limited colors once again. But, uh, yeah, I just. I did this in a separate layer, by the way. So I can alter with Control U without having the characters' colors mess up. I'm um, I'm making the outlines a bit darker and lighter using uh, Dodge and Burn. Usually I'm a bit against Dodge and Burn, but for outlines, it's it's a handy tool. I don't like to use it for actual shading. Well, that's the drawing. I hope you guys liked it. You can uh, check the images out on Deviant Art. And I'll see you guys next time.